round two, championship organiser Kevin Ferber had been working on the concept of a televised video diary of the scholarship teams. So in an effort to fine-tune the competitors' media skills, he had recruited ex-British rally champion Mark Higgins to give guidance to the crews before the start of the event. Well, here we are in Hull. It's the second round of the 205 Championship, and we're here for the Humberside Rally. And with me now is Simon Moore, age 30, an engineer from Sunderland. Um, you've had a great start to this year's championship, you won the first round and last year won many events as well. What actually got you interested in rallying? Um, I started about five years ago, um, started co-driving and my dad got into rallying. Um, so I sat in the co-driver's seat, just did clubman events really and then um, got to know a local motor club and then got to know other people who asked us to go navigating and then did that for about two years and then I decided to have a go myself in the driver's seat. Where are your plans or where do you want to be maybe in three or four years time? Obviously the target's to win the, the 1.9 scholarship but maybe then have a go at the uh, 206 Cup, maybe it's one of those rounds but like everything it's down to the money. We mentioned money there, it's obviously a key part in motorsport but where does your funding come from or where do you see your funding coming from in the future? Um, well this year I'm a bit more fortunate because I've had uh, two long standing sponsors um, and AB Motorsport are running the car this year so I can focus more on the driving side of things rather than the preparing the car which I did last year. Um, it's not just the name on the car, mm -hmm. um, I try and make them feel involved as they're helping us and um, obviously we could give them uh, test days right out in the car as well yeah. but I think just the fact that they're feeling involved with helping me as well so it's not just me taking money you know trying to give them, give something, them something back, back. as well you yeah. know. I'm here now with Ben Calvert, 30 He's been rallying for five years, three of those as a co-driver. So how did you actually get involved in motorsport? Uh, well, I started navigating first with my uncle and then when I uh, started driving, I met Kevin at uh, a rally local to me and he was harping on about this 205 challenge. It sounded like a good idea, so we thought we'd have a go. What do you feel that you can actually offer a sponsor different to just having the, you know, the name down the side mm. of the car and so forth? Yeah, well, I've tried to already do that because I've worked with three or four sponsors in the town who've been doing it and tried to offer them, try and get them a little bit involved, you know, yeah. bring them along to events. Uh, we did the Blight and Rally Cross and I brought a few along with that because it was quite a good spectacle in the first year. And then I've taken a couple to a test day at Sweet Lamb and let them sit in the car with me. And also I'm quite keen on media, you know, putting things in local newspapers yeah. and saying about... Uh, their help really. I mean this is one of the things I find with rallying or the beauty of it is you've got two seats so somebody can actually experience yeah, the whole rally thing that's it. you know with a rally school for example and that and that, that is what is nice about rallying mm. you can get them down to the grassroots of it and yeah. really get them involved. Very important I find in rallying to set yourself a plan and a goal. What is your goal this year? To get good reliable finishes in this year, build on driving skills and then maybe next year progress to try and compete for the overall championship. Right, well your career sounds like mine started quite a while ago, um, keep it going, obviously you're at a great age to start and uh, all the very best of luck for the future. Thank you very much. The media training continues throughout the event and we caught up with Mark at the start of round two. Today the competitors will tackle 45 stage miles, starting with Oliver's Mount on the tarmac, then moving into Dolby where the speed's going to be very, very high. Ian, you started eighth on the first round, uh, what aspirations do you have for the championship this year? Um, hopefully to finish and do as well as we can really, for the first year we can't expect anything else, but I'd like to take the five grand off Kevin. <laughs> so, You'll never get that. <laughs> <laughs> we could do but try, can't we? Yeah. So Scott here, it's your first round of the championship this year, you had plenty of beers last night, you think that's going to help you today? It should help the concentration, yeah, because I can only think on one thing then. Got a little bit of pressure because you've probably got one of the, uh, well, the championship winning car from last year. How do you think you're going to go today? Well, uh, I can't expect to win like uh, Matt did last year, but uh, I know I've got a good car and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Car preparation is obviously very important. It didn't work so well on the last one, but who's uh, involved in helping you with this car? Um, Johnny Milner built the engine and uh, we did the prep work ourselves uh, and uh, all the parts are from uh, West Midlands Motorsport. So who are you going to blame for the problem on the first rally? Is that down to Johnny, do you think? I don't think so, no. I think it was a problem with our electric, so <laughs> it wouldn't be right to blame him. I think we can. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously with Johnny, his history goes back a long way with the Peugeot. I used to rally against him in the Junior Championship. Uh, what's it like dealing with him? Oh, he's a nice, well, I found him a nice bloke. I didn't think he'd be uh, <clears throat> so committed to such a small championship, but he was, he was really involved and didn't sideline the car at all. He was good, very impressed. It's quite good dealing with Johnny, he is good, he's a good friend of mine, but uh, it's always better when you're giving him money rather than trying to get money off him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Well, Mark, we have two very nice shiny overalls, a nice Thank shiny you. car. Is Thank it you. a first rally? It is indeed. You're, pro you're probably starting with one of the fastest rallies in the championship on gravel yes. up in Dolby. Um, yes. How do you think you're going to go today? Um, we're just going to drive our own rally. We're just going to drive our own rally, not find out anyone else's times, just get to the end um, and obviously just get the experience. Where do you hope to finish? Have you got a, a plan? Um, well, Matt's not doing it today, so he's out of the question, but there's a couple of lads who didn't do the last round who are doing it today. I think there's a guy called Gaz Carlos, who's apparently very quick. Uh, there's obviously Chris Reed, who's fast, and Simon Moore, and Ian Tippett knows the area well, so just somewhere near them, really. I'll be happy. Stephen, very pretty car. He had quite a good start on the first round with fifth. Uh, what's your plans for Dolby? Yeah, I'm trying to uh, up the pace event by event. I'm being realistic for the year. I want to take it easy and just get used to the events. I'm not, I haven't done these type of events for uh, the years and just want to get some experience doing the events. So for this event, try and get a fourth, perhaps just scrape a third would be nice. But I'll be happy with a fifth round there. So just on the edge of the top three would be great. It's one of the nicest looking cars here, but it's not actually your car, is it? It's Tim's No, here. it's Tim Hookway and uh, TJX Motorsport. So how does that work? Uh, we built the car over the winter basically, brand new car um, for hire to hire to Steve for, for this championship and hopefully for a few more other rounds, uh, non-championship rounds. So the car is held together for the first event so let's hope it keeps going like that. So there is opportunities if somebody sees it on TV or whatever, wants to have a go at the Perthia Challenge, give you a call and they can go out and be rallying the next day basically? Of course yeah, on any BTRDA rounds or any rounds they choose really, single venue. I mean it's, uh, it can be prepared for tarmac or forest so uh, it'll be ready to go at the end of a phone call. If you had to put a very rough price on it, what would it cost to do a rally in, for example, a car like this? Um, very roughly, uh, for the 205 Challenge, you're looking at about £2,000 an event in oh, total costs. Right. Everything, uh, hotels, everything, tires, hotel, tires, tires, fuel, the lot. Turn That's up, the drive, point. and then give it back That's to right. you, hopefully in one piece. Hopefully in one piece. <laughs> no, it won't matter if it's not in one piece, because it's insured, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, we're just about to start the rally, getting ready now. This car has a bit of history, and I believe so do you. Uh, I wouldn't say history for me. The car's uh, got us around virtually every event we've entered. Certainly favours doing the Yorkshire Forests. And it's just going to be, hopefully, a fun, good day out there. Just You're all set for the event? Uh, just about, yeah. Just say a bit tired, but uh, we'll, we'll do what we can. It's, the car was only finished last night, so it's going to be very much a test bed just to see how it goes. So I think we'll be taking it very steady. Very posh electric windows in a rally car. Ah, too lazy to wind up. <laughs> Guys, uh, you didn't do the first round, but you're here. Probably one of the favourites for the rally. How do you feel? Not a favourite. Definitely not. No? Just get round to the finish. We all say that at the start, but you must have a plan where you want to be at the end. At the finish. <laughs> That's it. I'm finished for a long time, so I need to finish. Hi Steve, Steve, we're here with the second round of the championship. You got your first finish on the last one. How's preparations gone for this so far? Uh, actually, preparations have been a bit of a nightmare. We've had um, the last two nights. I've had two hours sleep, uh, none at all last night. We finished at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, went home, got changed, uh, showered, and headed up here. So I felt better to say the least. But uh, I'm glad to be here. So. You know, we'll give it a go and see what happens. Favoured frontrunner Matt Barker didn't make it to the start of this rally as his new car wasn't ready in time. However, he did play a part by coordinating the efforts of the West Midlands Motorsport, who were running a six-car team. The event started with business as usual, when the AB Motorsport entries of Simon Moore and Mark Mason took fastest time on stage one, albeit just one second ahead of Preston DJ Benny Calvert and his co-driver John Marsh. In third place was a surprise performance from the Tim Hookway hire car crew, Steve Luscombe and Andrew Joll, who came in just two seconds off the pace on the tricky closed road tarmac opener. The fight at the front took a dramatic turn when Moore and Mason's engines started to misfire with injector problems, costing the jovial Geordies the lead and 20 seconds. To every um, big bump we hit, the yeah. car misfires a bit, so we're just going to have to get it in service now and see what the problem is, you know. Young Welsh hotshot Tom Curtis showed some of his potential by posting a second fastest time on stage three and was holding third place 205 as the teams made it to service. The fourth, fifth and sixth places were very close as new boys to the championship Gaz Carlos and Martin Petit were holding fourth by two seconds from championship stalwarts Ian Tippett and Liam O'Kane, with Stephen Lusco and Andrew Joll lying just one second further behind. 
Each rally has a period of time given to allow each competitor time to service and repair the cars ahead of the second half of each rally. One of the more critical elements of the car's performance is the tyres, and we took time to look at the Yokohama controlled tyre that must be used by each of the scholarship's competitors. The tyre is the last thing that touches the ground, gives you all the grip, and is very, very critical to getting good times on the stages. Now we have Simon here. Um, the Yokohama tyre, that's when all the Persias are running. They're all exactly the same, so nobody can have an advantage with compounds or different tyres or whatever. That's right. Can you explain a bit about the tyre to us, please? Well, most of them, uh, competitors have elected to go for a 15-inch tyre. There are two compounds available in the tyre. Right. Yeah. There's a super soft compound and a soft compound. I use my um, skill and judgement <coughs> to um, nominate a tyre a couple of weeks before of e each event to say which one I think will be the best. Then the, comp the competitors then have got the choice whether to go with that tyre or not, yeah? So they do actually have a choice to go for either the soft compound or the hard compound? Yes, they do, yeah, depending on their ability and their skill. If you can explain why you would use a soft compound and when, and when okay. you would use a hard compound. Okay, so it's mainly to do with the weather and the temperature and the type of surface that you're driving on, yeah? yeah. Uh, the colder the weather and basically the softer compound tyre that you can use. So you're always playing durability against speed. You may yes. have the quickest tyre, but it may not last as long Correct, yeah. with a soft tyre. But if you want it to last a bit longer, but you're not going to quite get the same performance with a harder compound. Correct, yeah. The pattern here is very important, because obviously that's for clearing mud and Correct. so forth, but yeah. they're not allowed to touch that at all, is that right? No, no cutting allowed on the tyre uh, of sort of novice competitors, yeah. So I feel it's better for them to learn how the tyre sort of feels and works in its uncut form yeah. before they start experimenting. After first service, Moore and Mason set out on a charge to regain the lead. But halfway through the 12 miles of stage four, a bottom subframe bolt sheared, locking the car in second gear. That played into the hands of Reed, who along with his new co-driver Ingleby, has finally found a rhythm that no one could match. It looks like you're leading. Is it down to your help, do you think? Oh, I'd like to think so. <laughs> no, Chris is doing a great job. In second spot was Calvert and Marsh, whose consistency paid dividends. And not only did they take a worthy second place, but in doing so, now took the championship lead. Finishing third in their first event were a very happy Carlos and Petit, as this result was the crew's second ever finish out of 12 rally starts, with Gaz claiming that his move from GPA Spec 205 to scholarship standard had helped him focus on driving for a finish. The victory for Reed and Ingleby was potentially one of the most popular winners of a round within the last three years, as Chris has been consistently unlucky with mechanical failures and has never previously been able to prove his talent. This result will go a long way to justifying the confidence that his supporters have had in him, not least the talent spotted at the Bilbin Rally School, who have stood by him by naming Chris in their junior team for 2004. I'll drink all the